3,210 pounds, and that's something you can find in the used RV market pretty readily most of the time, especially right now. A 19 FBS Geo Pro coming in down here at A1RV. Looks pretty sharp. Looks like it was special ordered. Um, has things like a convection microwave, has the off-road package in it. This has solar uh, on the roof. The charge controller's working great. I can tell because we got live power batteries on the inside. And as you notice, it has no badging on it. Previous owner had all the decals on the outside removed that had any, any sort of name on it. They just preferred a sort of clean look about it. So they kind of looked at their Geo Pro and went, badges? We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> Now she's little, but she's light and she's bright and it makes this thing feel, well, pretty all right. <laughs> uh, the lighter colors and the sofa slide open up the living room here to really give us some excellent space. Now what's nice is that is a shallow sofa slide. So when the sofa is retracted, you see that metal grate down there? That's like our furnace intake. The sofa will basically rest just in front of that. So you never really need to open the slide out to fully use and enjoy the RV. It's just that it's you know, much more fully enjoyable when you do so. Now these have a 6-1 sidewall with like a, an extremely exaggerated 5-inch vaulted ceiling, which means you're about 6-1 at the apex of this thing. So there's, it, it feels nice and big and open and spacious in here. That big uh, 13,500 BTU air conditioner is actually a low profile. We might get up on the roof before it's all said and done, so you don't have a really exaggerated overhead uh, clearance on this thing. Storage over the sofa, just an extra little nook and kick of space. That's just good things Rockwood does. And you'll see... No sort of scars, mars, scabs. The only thing I've ever seen on this RV was that the previous owner kept it clean and added a couple very simple enhancements to it. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the sofa in a minute. We'll see an extra little hidden. You know what? Why do why talk why wait? Let's do it right now. So the sofa right here, obviously, you know, place you can sit down. It can fold down into a sleeper. It is directly across from our entertainment center, and you see how that TV can pop out. But what's also nice is this sofa has a little hidden picnic table behind it. You can sort of pop out when you need it. So, you know, you can turn this into a bit of a Dinofa arrangement if you are so inclined. Now, over here, this is, it looks like a camp queen based on the sizing. However, this RV is big enough. You can put a, basically a true queen bed in there if you are so inclined. Now, some folks like to have the little extra space at the headboard area where you can, you know, put like a, a little bag or a CPAP machine or something like that. Some folks want the bigger bed. That is a heated mattress, by the way. You might see that little mess of cords over there. That's just all bundled up and it plugs directly into the mattress. And then you see the power outlets near the end of the bed on the left side there. Also, again, good for running CPAPs or phone chargers. Now, there's a little plug over the heat vent over there. Not a plug, but a button, actually. That is to activate the inverter because this is built during the Geo Pro generation. Not all of them always had this, but this is a more recent model that does have an inverter built into it to run all of the household outlets off battery power. Now, that can be very taxing on the battery, so you want to be careful doing that, but it is capable of doing so. Now, speaking of running stuff on the battery, this TV that we're looking at here is either 110 or it actually does have its own 12 volt power plug so you don't have to be part uh, plugged into park power to use it now it has its own built-in dvd player and then this is our bluetooth stereo so it does all of the entertainment things and has multiple available hdmi plugs for upgrading your entertainment beyond like let's say you got a roku stick or a fire stick or something well it can do all that and to make it even more friendly for that kind of stuff you have the wi-fi ranger basically the camper has a built-in router plugged into the ceiling of this thing the the roof as it were and uh which i understand are two different things uh <laughs> They're related, but they're not the same. Um, so if you do want to hook up to some, you know, mobile data access points, this RV makes it easy. Now that front windshield, and it is a windshield, not, like on the side, to the left we have a window. On the front we have a windshield. And I specify the difference because the front is going to be exposed to far more headwind gust potential thrown rocks, although that is unbelievably, uncommonly uncommon. Uh, my wife and I... In all the years we've been together, our, our windshield on our vehicle, which is on the road a lot more than our camper, has been dinged by rocks only two times, and it's never failed us. This is basically the same thing. RVs spend less time on the road than vehicles, so you can do the math. It's very, very unlikely. Technically, it's not impossible to be struck by lightning today. It's also just very unlikely. It's kind of what I'm talking about here. Um, 
what I was getting at, though, is along with those bedside windows, it makes the whole thing just look and feel nice and open and large up here. Again, small camper with some big space. Now, they were really smart with the storage space they did have available. Like, if you see this little uh, vertical double cabinet door below the entertainment center, well, if we get on our knees and take a look in there, you can see there is actually a hanging clothing rack, but the previous owners added some shelving into it, turned it into pantry space. That's one of the nice things about closets. It can always just become a pantry if need be. Now it's a small kitchen and chances are you're gonna spend most of your time outside or cooking outside in a little camper like this. That's what most folks tend to do. But it is very capable of serving as an indoor cook station. Now I've got that cooktop flipped down right now below that big breeze window. And I wanna give you a look at everything all closed up first. But then I want to use some x-ray goggles and look down here starting below the uh, kitchen area. You see just every nook and cranny storage space they could huge drawer capacity above the sink we've got a pair of double uh cabinet spaces that actually have flip up struts to keep themselves open over here we have a uh five cubic foot two-way fridge with a freezer pocket at the top so that is gas and electric it is very off-grid friendly not to mention the fact that above that we have a convection microwave oven which is one of the things that leads me to believe this was a special order geopro a lot of those that you see in stock around this neck of the woods are not built from the factory with the convection option. Now, this door has not only just a full viewing window in it, you know, it's not even frosty glass, it does also have the uh, privacy shade, and you can kind of see it a little bit through the screen door right there. Now, someone might go, well, how do you operate if the screen door is in the way? What you do, you open the door, close the screen door, put the shade up and down, and then close the door normally. It is kind of a multi-step process, but... Manufacturers tried to put a manipulating screen on the inside of the screen door, and I do not understand why the consumer market totally revolted against that idea. Because anytime I talk to anybody about it, they always say, oh, no, that's absolutely smarter. That's how it should be done. But nobody wanted to buy one that way, so figure that out. <laughs> Next to the sofa over here, some more outlets, which, again, are rigged up to that inverter should you choose to use it when you're off-grid. Again, be sparing on that because you can very quickly sap the batteries. Although... Previous owner, they did deck this thing out. So not only does this have the factory 100 watt uh, roof solar uh, uh, panel on it, and you see the 30 amp charge controller over here charging us up right now, even though uh, you know I'm running all the batteries, it's actually netting positive charge. I'm running all the lights rather. They outfitted this with a pair of six volt batteries wired in series. And if you don't know what that means, basically this RV has about roughly four times the uh, the electric gas tank of a single 12 volt battery. And I don't know a simpler way to describe that for someone who is not super familiar with solar things. That toilet has been upgraded from the standard factory plastic stool. You can see they added the little sprayer there to make sure everything is kind of cleaned up. And I mean, look at the fixtures in here, the shower, the sink, it is white, it is gleaming. This thing's in fantastic shape. It, it looks like it's it it looks like it was sanitized. I mean, it's it 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 feels sanitary in here. I love that little shower caddy right there for our, our soaps and stuff because those little corner shelves are not good for holding a bottle of soap. This also does have the shower miser. Now you might notice again all the little various stickers from the factory. Previous owner went through and carefully removed those. They must have been very good with some goo gone because there's like no residual signature of any of that there. Skylight above the shower near the sidewall gives a big goofball like me some extra headroom, which is very valuable. And the larger style vent fan up here, and when we get outside, you'll very quickly see it does have the uh, roof vent cover on it as well. So even good on a rainy day if that's what you're looking for. Full medicine cabinet. We kind of peeked at the sink, but I love that little bonus shelf above the sink with the little toothbrush holder and all kinds of little knickknacks and doodad spaces because you have limited counter space in here. And Rockwood just is always willing to think a little bit outside of the box and that extra space, man, that is useful. One of the other awesome qualities on this one is that it has an actual full pass-through storage compartment up front outside. That's a rare find in a little camper. Now you see this big metal kind of shelf table thing right here and you go, what is that thing? Well, that can be mounted over here. And this RV would have originally come with one of those free floating Coleman camp grills. So the idea behind this one is that you didn't have to ever plug a grill into the camper or a Blackstone or a griddle or whatever, you get the idea. What is nice though, is Rockwood was thinking ahead when they built this. 
because even though it came with a Coleman camp grill that didn't plug into the camper with a gas grill quick connect, they still plumbed in right in front of that tire a gas grill quick connect. So if you want a different kind of outside cooker, you can hook it up here. You know, they were very proactive and advanced in their thought processes here. Now, it kind of is a little bit jarring to some folks that it doesn't have the normal GeoPro graphics on this, but it looks sharp. It looks clean to me. And that's one of the funny things about, you know, when you take any of these RVs and you start peeling off a lot of the stickers, they end up looking pretty good when you're done. It's actually something that I, I always enjoy seeing. Now, we already talked about the windshield up front. This is a narrow body camper, but it's an interesting size. It's seven foot four wide. Usually, little campers like this are either seven foot or seven six. Obviously, it's closer to seven six. It feels seven six, but it's slightly smaller, a little easier to see around. And they are also using a ton of Asdell in these. GeoPro is one of the very few things that is Asdell on both inside and outside of the laminated walls. And it is an all aluminum structure. We also have a laminated roof and rear wall, power tongue jack on the front here, which would have been an optional piece of equipment doing the heavy lifting for us. And unlike many single axle campers, a dual propane setup with auto changeover regulator, like a bigger Rockwood. GeoPros are very highly equipped. They are small, they are not the least expensive thing, but that is what's so cool about this one, entering the used RV market with some very nice equipment, some nice upgrades, the dual six volt batteries, the off-road, the solar package, all that good stuff. You're getting all that stuff, and you're not paying the new RV price tag. And buddy, that sounds good to me. Now right up top there, you can see that Max Air vent cover I mentioned over the bathroom vent, giving us some good anytime airflow. What's cool is that is actually the tallest point on the camper, because it has a low profile air conditioner. The AC is lower than that. So when you see the full exterior height measurement on this at the early part of the video that I put up, about the five second mark, uh, that's, you know, that, that vent is the tallest part. Now, the newer GeoPros actually have a sewer hose caddy on this, and I don't know if this is the one that came on the camper, or if this RV didn't come with one yet, and they added a sewer hose tube to the back here to make it easier to access. I'm not sure which. The fact is, though, you now have a very easy to access sewer hose tube caddy job. Oh, speaking of stuff underneath, this is something you can't easily see, and I want to make sure I don't miss it. This is outfitted with the 12-volt tank heater package, so if you're going to spend some spring and fall camping time, and maybe like right now, I woke up this morning, it was 31 degrees. Well, <laughs> in a camper, I start to get a little bit nervous. Well, you don't have to here, because it will make sure that your uh, hoses and stuff don't freeze up. Um, your, your holding tank specifically. Now that is an anti-slam entry door. You see the bigger handle there, and obviously the uh, stable step taking a lot of the wiggle jiggle out of it. Now I think this is really important on a floor plan like this where the door is behind the axle, because that tends to be the easiest way to make the RV jumpy when you come in and out. Good look at the off-road package here. So it's a bigger tire, it's an axle riser kind of kit. It'll increase your ground clearance a lot, which is very nice, even if you're not gonna be like, oh, I'm going off-road, brother. Frankly, I've never seen a campground that had a really nice driveway, and even the ones that do have some nasty speed bumps. And that's just a nice way to make sure that I'm not gonna hit my sewer connections against that speed bump and rip the stuff apart, which, ooh, that's a bad day at the office. And I mentioned it, but just so you can see where it is, you can see the LP quick connect there, and this has a full spare tire here. I hope you never need it, but if you do, that's where she be. Now I'm gonna move slow because there's a lot of stuff on this roof, and this roof has a very exaggerated vault to it, and you always need to exercise some very strong levels of caution when walking on RV roofing. I don't care if it's this or that fifth wheel or whatever. Um, I'm on a lot of roofing, and I've never taken a fall. I never plan to do so because I move very slow like this, and if I'm tired, I don't get up here. If the weather's unsafe, I don't get up here, but anytime I can, I try to get up here because you know, even if this isn't new RV money, we've established that, but it's still a lot of money. It, and, and I don't care, you know, whether you're spending 500, 5,000, 50,000 or north of that even. I get that that's a big amount of money to whoever is buying this. I don't think anyone ever does this because, oh, I just had money to burn. Well, if you got money to burn, you can just hand it to me. I'll kick you in the nuts and give you half of it back and leave you further ahead. <laughs>
My point is, I respect that you worked hard for your dollars, and I want to give you every look at this thing I possibly can. And this thing is awesome looking up here. The roof looks great. The seals look great. You can see how there's no like tree branch damage up here, anything like that. The RV is not here because the previous owner got scared of it and bashed it up. They just didn't have the time to use it the way that they planned to. So that's our Wi-Fi Ranger over there, and that's the Sky 4 updated system. We give you some better signal uh, retention and, and length, basically longer range. Um, the 100 watt go power solar kit over here. If you want to expand that, you can add a second one of those, by the way, without needing to change out your charge controller. If you want to go beyond the 200 watts, uh, then you kind of you got to start really looking at what do you got to do and how how you're going to wire it and what gauge wiring and all that kind of stuff. And then the max air vent cover that we talked about, you could see that from the ground level. But again, I just want you to see that it's not all banged up, bruised up, gashed up, gouged up. So there you have it, guys. There's a sign. You know where to find us down here at Advantage One RV. We're just a mile east of Halid RV, which is just three quarters of a mile, if even that, off the uh, interstate exit. It's pretty darn easy to get here. And whether you need trailers, fifth wheels, hitching pieces, parts, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, or everything in between, we only do everything, guys. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.